This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Usually I'm not the type of guy to, you know, reach out to uh, folks like you say, hey, I'm a big fan, et cetera, et cetera. But I had a crazy story and I had to, I had to tell you. So I drive long distance to school, long distance back. And the only thing that gets me through the drive is the, is the podcast. I've been going through the feed. I start, you know, 50 episodes back, listen in order, and then I go 50 more and blah, 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 right? Anyway, I'm driving home late at night a few days ago. And I passed, I'm passing through this sparsely populated area. I take a different exit, go under a flashing red. Cop sees me, cop pulls me over, walks up, asks for my license, and he's going back. Now, it's late at night, and my patience run kind of bare. So I play the podcast while I'm waiting for him to come back. When he comes back, he sees me pause it, and he's like, is that the, is that the Pete and Sebastian show? We did two or three minutes. He hands me my license then. He's like, have a nice night. Now, is this the first time a cast listener has gotten out of a ticket because of the cat? All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the Pete and Sebastian show. Uh, my name is Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete Corielli on the other side. Patrick working the ones and twos. Uh, Boom. Weather 75. Uh, with a light wind what? coming out of the east. Weather <laughs> here in uh, weather here in Los Angeles, by the way, uh, a frigid thirty eight degrees. Uh, looking for a little frost on the grass. It's thirty eight out right now. Well, yeah. See no, now this, these, this these was... <clears throat> shows don't always air now in order. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't so, want to throw people off, but um, you guys got. In California, right? You got all this snow in Northern California, and you got a ton of rain. So, is it safe to say for the next year or so, everyone will be able to use their sprinklers and all that? Is that like? I was telling Lana this yesterday. I said, "Okay, it's been raining like cats and dogs over here, right? Right. Everything's like green. You know, these the mountainsides got like a nice little green moss, whatever, coming up. Beautiful. So I'm thinking, okay." It's raining now, okay, and it's a Mediterranean climate, so in the summer, we don't get as much rain. Isn't that just the way the climate is, and we could water our lawns in the summer because it don't rain, but now we don't water because we're getting rain? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. We ain't watering our lawns year-round. I mean, we, we reduce the amount of water... Yeah, uh, in yeah. this time of year, because we're getting the rain, right? <clears throat> so what's what's yeah. the problem? But you didn't. You got more snow than you've gotten in years. That's why I'm bringing it up. Some, the snow hasn't been enough, but this year it's been like record breaking. So you know, and the other thing that drives me nuts with California, it's like we need rain, we need rain, we need rain. It starts raining. Oh, it's raining too much. We got have uh, floods <laughs> and shit. You people, what do you what do you think? It's just a faucet. You can set it at what you want. It's nature. You take it when you get it. And then when you don't have it, it's calm down. It's coming again, like you said. <laughs> Holy shit. These people are like waiting for the Easter money in fucking February. He don't yeah. come in February. He'll be here in April, like every year. Relax. I'm with you, bro. Fire up the sprinklers. That's you need what some. I this say. 38, though. The 38 is nice. And I'll tell you why, eh? If you could hum together just a bunch of 38 degree days, the homeless just start to. <laughs> Head down to Mexico, bro. I'm telling you. It's nice. We got no homeless around here. They just, even when they, they dip a toe in the summer, but as soon as September comes, they're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to die. <laughs> you know? But you, where you live, I mean, you could find a nice bush and make it a home for years. For years. I couldn't believe it when I lived in California how my outdoor porch was literally another room every day. The sun would be a little cloudy. You get concerned, and then boom, about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Just perfect. So. Yeah, it it's uh, the climate here. You just you can't beat it. Um, but it has been cold. It's nice, though, this time of year. And if this is airing in January or whenever it's airing, uh, right now it's December 12th, 13th, whatever it is. And uh, we got the tree up. We light that up. I got I got a fire going now, bro. I got uh, my fireplace working in the living room. 
Yeah. I start cracking that around 5, 6 o'clock, get the room nice and toasty, and uh, kids come out in their pajamas, and it's like, this is what life is about. So we're oh, having, man. Uh, See, bro, we we're might having have to a do a flip. A flip flop on when we put the show on, cause I'm I'm dying to talk about all that too, bro. It's <laughs> go, go, feels go. so good around the holidays, right? You know, nothing. You just start to shut it down. I got I got one more uh, show to do, but like my father started a tradition years ago. Not even a tradition, it's just something he did. But his last day of work before Christmas. He'd always come through the door and like push it open and belt out, I'll be home for Christmas. And then we'd all sing it. It was great, you know? So I do it all the time now. But I came home last week from a show. I come in and Jackie and Sadie are standing there. They got cookies going, the trees lit, they're arm in arm, and they go, Oh, be I go, I got one, I got one more show. Oh my God. Oh, Next week. Baby. And she goes, Oh, I forgot. I go, God. You're singing it too soon. <laughs> How's that new tree sitting in the house? Is it all set up looking good? New tree's good. Got the ornaments dripping off the branches. Um, I had a Christmas party. The yeah. eggnog Christmas party on Saturday night. Right? Yeah, yeah. I was resistant about some of the stuff that Lana wanted to do. Um one of the things was she wanted to rent a piano and bring in a pianist and a singer and have them singing like Christmas songs all night long. I go, hey, we ain't wow. doing that. Uh, eh? we ain't yeah. Well, gotta, I mean, you got to rent the piano. piano. You, yeah. you got to rent the piano. <sighs> then you got to pay for the talent, right? So I'm like, let's, uh, uh, let's put the radio on or whatever the fuck. No, I think it'll be fun. And I said, I said, all right, I get it. Yeah. So we do this party. I got, I, I got to, I got to, I got to give you a visual. We do the party. We invite about fifty people, I'd say. All right. And uh, hold on, let me just uh, see if I got this thing here. So there's a company that just you can rent pianos. And just, <clears throat> man, that's got to be. Backbreaking. Uh, so I, it, it, we had a foosball table. It looked like a, a chalet. We brought in this furniture, like like a leather uh, brown couch. You know, something that you would see at a ski lodge. Yeah, right? yeah, I love it. I love it. We we had a. Uh, it said Maniscalco Chalet, like an emblem over the bar. She really did it nice, Lana. I had the fire going. It was cozy. Right. It was outside. It was really cold. Oh, but we man. had heat we had heaters and we had the fire going. So So people people start to come into the uh the party, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh I made my eggnog, right? All right. And people are loving the eggnog. Sounds this sounds fantastic, bro. This whole thing just sounds beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I get tapped on the shoulder. I turn around. It's Lionel Richie. What the? Are you kidding me? Newly inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I watched his speech. Almost gave it a standing O from my couch, Lionel Richie. Looking a little different than the album covers, too. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's looking for the fountain of youth. <laughs> <clears throat> what the hell is Lionel Richie doing at your Christmas? Wait. He. He's. Please. What? He's not the Christmas scene. No, listen. Oh my god, I thought Lana I thought Lana hide Lana Richie for a second. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. I go I can lie to Richie. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, oh god. my god. So we have a mutual friend, Lionel Richie and I. And I met Lionel Richie twice. I met him I was at a corporate gig. 
And I did the comedy, and then he came in and did uh, the music. Wow. And yeah. we just kind of just took a picture. He didn't even know I was a comedian. Uh, he was just doing like meet and greet uh, photos, and I just hopped in and took a photo with him. And then I met him five years ago through our mutual friend at a restaurant, just in passing. So over the course of the last year, this mutual friend had said, you know, we should get together with Lionel, have a dinner. And I said, yeah, you know, tell him. Why not? We should get together. So this party came up and I told the mutual friend, I said, why don't you just invite Lionel? See if, you know, if he wants to come. I didn't think he was going to come. Right, huh? right, yeah. So he walks in. Bro. Class. Brought a, brought a bottle of Dom, right? Fucking love hearing good stuff about people. Can we? Get, I don't know Patrick legally, but in post, can we get a little line out playing? I mean, that'd be a nice touch. He's so good, dude. His speech was so great. Keep going. I'm sorry, but anyway, no, he comes sorry. in. He's got a bottle of Dom. Bottle of Dom, 2008, right? But I've never seen this bottle before. The the bottle has a. By the way, I'll put this up on Patreon. The bottle had like a crushed gold emblem. It just looked like it was rare. Right? Wow. Right, right, right. I go, oh, you know, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And I, I, I got to yeah. Go on. How's a go guy ahead. like Lionel? Because it says a lot. How's he holding the bottle when he comes in? How does he present it? Like, it, you know, it's good interesting. Good question. Good question. You don't hold it by the neck. This I had it cradled. What? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so he just said, you know, here you get it. like, like almost like a waiter. Just like, here, here you go. And I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. This and that. So then you can reach in, put a hand under the neck like a baby, <laughs> and then the other hand under the body and you know, hold it. Up. And I would imagine. He's got the gold crest showing what he what he's cradling, oh, like yeah. the, like the baby's face, right? Oh, oh yeah, God. Fa oh, <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 label is label side up. Beautiful oh. presentation. The only thing I'm missing was like a little towel underneath on his on his <laughs> arm. Forget the towel; it's on Lionel Richie's arm. That's worth more. <laughs> now, my only question. This sounds to me like Lionel, like remember the coin, Joe La Montaigne, the coin guy years ago who had his own coin, wasn't him? Someone gave you a coin with his face on it, I think. Joe Montaigne, no, no, Some, uh, coin. Was years ago on a cast, or did I tell you about it? Somebody had a coin on their face. But my point is, I'm wondering if Lionel just has these 2008 doms lined up, so whenever it's party time, he, he just grabs a freshie and goes... He doesn't look like the kind of guy perusing the liquor store before no, the Mascalco bash. That's in his inventory in his house. Yeah, he just goes yeah. down to the cellar and All goes right. to, you know, party gifts and takes it right out, right? Wow. Wow. So we start talking. You know, he's he's over at the wind too. He's got a residency over there. So I was asking him about the wind and and awesome. you know how how he likes it. And we start talking about, you know, putting out new music, new comedy, and, you know, uh, does he listen to reviews of his stuff? And and uh, just had some good insight. Uh, you know, this guy's 72 years old. He's been, you know, around. So uh, good insight on the entertainment business. And then I'm sitting there, and I, told, I even told him, I go, bro, I can't even believe you're at my home right now. I said, I grew <laughs> up dancing on the ceiling. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, Sail just a on. <laughs> One more. Good times never felt so good. Oh, That's a Lionel <laughs> classic, bro. Hello Fresh. What is Hello Fresh? With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. We've used it. It sets you up. It gives you the perfect portions to make the perfect meal. It takes the thinking out of it. There's so much. Jackie's always in the way. I don't know what to make for dinner tonight. I don't know what to... We've done this. 
it tells you what you're gonna have for dinner. Have you tried the Sebastian? It's really great, man. Tried it, and not only is it simple to use, and I'm the chef in the house, Lana loves it as well. And you've got New Year's goals. Like that, I tell you, HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store, people. Take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your doorstep. HelloFresh's festive fair collection features limited time recipes made with seasonal produce and premium proteins. Get out of the post holiday slump with these elevated winter classics, right, Pete? Oh, absolutely. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can and will be stress free and delicious, baby. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding protein to a veggie dish. They got you covered. Eating well is top of mind this month, and it's comforting to know you always get top quality with HelloFresh. Ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, so you know they're fresh. Skip the snowy schlep to the grocery store and stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and more at HelloFresh Market. Simply add these staples and sweets to your weekly order, and they'll arrive at your doorstep along with your meals. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TheCast21 and use the code TheCast21 for 21 free meals plus shipping. I, I didn't make a mistake. For 21 free meals plus shipping. You heard it right from Pete. 21 meals. People, this is America's number one meal kit. Now, I'm curious, because a guy comes from the same world you're in now, too. Did, did, it, did, did they comment on the beauty of the home? Does that get said? I love your home. I love the location. Yeah. That's all that was said on that. Nice. But here's the thing, bro. Let me give. Let me yep. get your take on this. When you got a guy like that come to your party, right? What's the move on? Like, how much, how much attention do you give him? Does everybody else now take a back seat, or do you work the party like you would generally work any party? In whoever <laughs> comes, comes. What's your take? Because I, I, I got something yeah. that happened, and I want your take on what. Go well, ahead. I equate it to I know you played some basketball growing up. And growing up, sometimes, you know how you'd play zone mm -hmm. in basketball? But once in a while, the other team would have a really great guy. So we do what's called a box and one, which means four guys would be a box, but then one guy would guide, follow that guy everywhere. When you get a guy like Lionel in your house, you got to do a box and one on your own. Meaning one eye is on the party as a whole and one eye is always on Lionel's needs. Always on Lionel's needs. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it rolls. Because that, I would expect nothing less if you if you were at a party like that. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. I mean, you know? So, I, 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 yeah, you can't treat Lionel like a pedestrian party member. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I got side. Somebody took me away from Lionel. I don't know how it happened, but it was you don't one have of those. to chat with him the whole time. You just got to see in the peripheral. Okay. He's at I got distracted, and I started. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was like, oh, somebody came. Hey, nice to see. You. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Then Todd Phillips comes to the party, which who I invited. Todd Phillips, director. Right. Hangover, Joker, old school, right? He comes. He just started filming the new Joker. Yeah. Like literally a couple of days. Bro, why? Bro, f I fucking call me. I'll fly in for this shit. I'll rent the tux. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you think we're going to have an airport here? My God. Whew. All right. <laughs> Todd so, Phillips. Wow, bro. We start talking, right? I don't know where to go with this. I mean, it's the best acting job I've ever seen in my entire life. 
was what oh, yeah. Joaquin did in that last joke. Best thing. I, I just couldn't believe. It. I can't believe they're doing it again. That's why I'm saying, wow, amazing. Anyway, yeah, and the hangover, looking forward. Fucking kidding me. So looking forward, looking forward to Joker too. Um, so he's there. Uh, then I got friends from school there. I got my trainer, Jock was there. Uh, pediatrician Scott Cohen, the whole thing, right? Great party. Then we start doing, uh, the singers start doing like sing along songs, like, uh, eh, eh, bro, I'm not into this. I'm not into this, but I, you know, I was part of it, you know. Like, uh, what's that song? Hold on. on. Is it Billy Joel? Who the hell is it? Spirit, all right. Da, da, yeah, da, 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 da. What is that? It's a piano man, bro. It's practically America's national anthem. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, it's Billy yeah. Joel. Yeah, I hear that. I walk off the dance floor, right? Well, I mean, yeah. you don't dance to that. You grab your beer and sway back and forth. Yeah, like exactly. A pirate, I ain't, do- I ain't yeah. doing that. I, it's if I ain't dancing, I ain't, you know, I ain't swaying with a beer. But, well, of course, you know, Lana loves the, that we're all, all, the whole party's like. Was Lionel the whole party. singing piano, man? Bro, in the back of my head, I was thinking, what if he gets on the piano and starts right. belting out shit? I'm like, that, that would be the ultimate, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm looking around. He's gone. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he left. He left. Now, I'm thinking, did he leave because he's got another party to go to? Or was did he leave? Was he looking around going, I come to this fucking guy's party, and he's singing piano, man? That's, you know, like. There's a lot to dissect there. I mean, <laughs> um, when they sang We All the World, all of them together, he was, I think, standing right next to Billy Joel. We all the children. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they had words that day. and you know. But honestly, maybe you could equate it to, like, if you were at a party and all of a sudden someone went up and did a mic tap. Okay, who wants to go first, guys? We're all going to do some stand-up. <laughs> Maybe you think maybe you'd go loud and stop the call before you get that. <laughs> People think, think I'm going to go into my stand. So I don't, I don't know. Um, surprised he didn't get the side pull over. Uh, hey, I'm going to take off. Had a great time. Thanks. That's I'm, so I was thinking maybe he had like, maybe he's like, hey, I'm out of here, whatever. But I, I, you know, just, I just clocked it in my head, just right, filed right. it. Maybe the piano spooked him though, man. I mean, yeah, the me. fact that you're literally saying to me, <laughs> then I'm wondering, maybe Lionel will get on. And I look around, and he's gone. <laughs> he's, he's probably going, any second, one of these people are going to go, hey, Lionel, <laughs> why don't you come over here and, uh, you know, hit us with a couple of the Commodores, early numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I, that's, a, that's a great question does a musician feel when he walks into a party and there's a a pianist playing and singing does he go oh yeah here we go again they're gonna ask you know does he see that and go i want to hop on or does he see that and go i gotta get out of here before they ask me to hop on what's what's the hey the take on that because yeah no i mean it could go either way maybe it depends on what night i mean i would think if i was 72 i'd be sliding out the back door as soon as someone (laughs) started tickling the keys but you know i mean again maybe if uh you know it was just all stars you know like if you had just an all celebrity soda soda party maybe i don't know but i don't know man it's a really good question um even like you know, like you hear these stories about guys like uh, like Billy Joel met Christy Brinkley because he Billy Joel was on vacation in some tropical island, and they had a piano bar, and he hopped on, and she was there, and she's like, "Who's that?" And the friend she was with was like, "That's fucking Billy Joel. You don't know him." But uh, yeah, but he, did, did Billy see 
hot girls yeah, and go, that, let me hop on. That's exactly what he said in hindsight. He goes, I saw them. I'm like, let me hop on so they got a good idea who I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but the Todd Phillips sing piano man. No, he he left too. He was he. This was towards the end. Oh, and again, yeah. props to my wife here for this for this uh, party, bro. It was like a a ski, you know, like a a ski, not a real ski, but it was made out of wood. And on the ski, there was three shot glasses glued to the ski. So you got three people together, and he did a shot on the ski. Right, oh, and they were yeah, going. Yeah. They were going around with the ski all night long, and people were getting loaded on the on the shots. But great party, yeah. And uh, went till about twelve thirty at night, and we went to bed. Right now, at five o'clock in the morning. Someone's at my front door ringing the bell. Right? Now, this is unheard of. Right. right? This shouldn't be happening. Right? Yeah. And then the alarm goes off. So I go to the front door. I'm half asleep, right? Of course, Lana, no help. You got anything? Bat? Anything? Nothing. Whoa! Bro, Learn anything uh, from the Pelosi situation, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I bring out there, they're going to use it on me. Man, that's right. the way I look yeah. at it. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, well. I look out the, the window, and there's a light in my driveway, and it's, like, bright. So I'm looking, I go, oh, they, they must be picking up the piano. Like, I, th- I thought it was, like, the people picking up the the rental stuff that we that we rented from the party. Right. This is where my head's at. So then I go in the living room, right out the window, I see a flashlight outside. Holy shit, dude. I know what's going on. I go, this is it. They're coming for me, right? So I go to the door. I'm in a robe. I go to the door, and there's two police officers, and they go, oh! Oh, shit. And the moment, I'm like, oh. Like, you would have thought they were robbing the house, and I was the police officer, right? Like, the way they, the way they, uh, if anything, I should be going, whoa, you know, like, right. what are you doing yeah. here? They were like, whoa. Wow. Oh, they they went, whoa? Yeah, to me. Oh, I thought you were just saying, like, whoa, they were there. You're at your door. They come up to the door, and you and they go, whoa, when they saw you. Yeah, they're outside in, in uh-huh. like, my patio, and I just show up. Through the glass, they see me. I'm inside, and through the glass, they see me. And they're about 15 feet away, and they go, whoa. That's so funny to me because, like, they honestly went, whoo, like that, but you can't. That's so funny to me. (laughs) (laughs) Bobby, what's what's your take here? What's your take? I gotta, I gotta answer this. Your whole state is bizarre, bro. (laughs) Female cops that get, that go, ooh, when someone appears at their own door at five in the morning when you're shining a flashlight on them. This is, uh, what should take on sending two women to go check out what's going on? I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, I've never seen on patrol two women. Right. And this has nothing to do with women, men, whatnot. I just, I haven't seen a tandem of two women on a on a in a patrol, it's normally a guy and a girl, right? Have you ever seen two women in a cop car? Uh no, I can't say that I ever have seen two women together in a cop car. No, man. Two women. And they go, Oh, hi. 
I come out. I'm in my robe. I'm freezing. Right. I go, what's going on? She goes, the alarm went off. And we were, I go, alarm went off. I go, that's, just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, hear anything or whatever. Oh, we got an alarm. Blah, blah, blah. So I go back. I go, everything's okay. So you know, they exchange information and then they leave. Go back. Lana's, Lana's, Lana's dead to the world, right? Like, like, ah, I'm thinking that she would have been up in bed with the lights on a little bit going, what happened? Is everything yeah. okay? Nothing. Yeah. Sleeping? I could have been <laughs> shot dead in my own living room, right? She would have got up at 8.30 to get her coffee and see me laying on the floor. That's that's <laughs> right. how like uninterested she is in anything going on with safety. Did right? she know you got out of bed because there was something going on? Yeah, because I, before I go, I go, find out what's going on with the alarm. And then I got like a grunt. And then I come back dead. You know, like... <laughs> Like I'm, I'm looking like it's five o'clock. I'm like, I'm up now. We right, ain't go. Right. I don't go to bed after that. Right. Like my heart's racing too fast to like slip back into bed and get a good night's sleep after I got you know cops in my in my covered patio area. My wife, uh-uh. you know, like dead, and I'm sitting there. And, you know, I call right. the alarm. Call. I'm, I'm like investigating what happened. Yeah. You think she yeah. would have took the the reins and said, "Let me see, let me call the alarm company. Where's it? Where's the door open? You know, where where where's it coming from?" Right. I mean, for all you know, right behind the edge where the pool, the cliff drops down. There's a guy up against the wall, <laughs> just making a radio call. The alarm went off. I got to give it like a half hour. They'll probably go back to bed. I'll, I'll I'll slide back in. Right. Two female cops. I gotta say, I just recently watched Top Gun. I don't know if you saw that. Um, I mean, that Top Gun, um, Top Days Gun. of Thunder, where he's the race car driver. Oh, I, didn't, I never saw that one. Oh, there's a great scene where they, they're drinking in the truck that tr- brings the trailer where it's going, and they get pulled over, and then he's in the back drinking with Duvall, who's his uh, his uh, guy, um, and the truck opens up, and they got to get out, put their hands on the wall, and a female cop comes up to them, and she's like, you're all under arrest for bringing moonshine across the state lines because they were drinking moonshine. And then he puts his hands up on the wall. She starts feeling him up, grabs his Johnson and goes, oh, I see you're packing. And you're watching the movie going, what the hell? And she turns around, turns around, opens up a shirt. She's like a stripper, starts kissing him. So I thought maybe you were gonna tell me Lionel left early, but he brought you a little Christmas package the next morning. <laughs> The two female cops. I never saw that before. I just waiting for one of them to hit play on a radio and start doing a dance on your porch. Oh, <laughs> LA, God. baby. LA, baby. Shit. Wow. So, dude, seriously, did you find out what set the alarm off? It's uh, It was something faulty. It was a faulty wire or something. Something, something was fucked up. Shouldn't have went off. But the thing is, you know what? I got to pay for that. If you get cops sent to your house, there's a charge if they come. Did you know that? No, yeah. no. What do you mean? Just for anybody? Like if I call the cops right now? It's through the alarm. Oh, yeah. Through your alarm, so, you pay money, right? Yeah, you you pay a service. I don't know. No, it's the city. The city charges you. Like, doesn't the tax dollars pay for a visit don't you think with your tax dollars they should tell you 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 get three nine one ones for free right like, like well you call nine one it's you call, I, I bet go ahead, go ahead i'm sorry so go ahead. <laughs> you should i agree maybe you get three for the year after the third one you got to start paying that makes a lot of sense to me but it's yeah. based i would imagine off the alarms and in LA, you pay the, the the service fee, right? So that if your alarm, like we have an alarm, we could have paid more money to have the cops come when it goes off. But me and Jackie were like, what if it goes off accidentally? They're gonna be here. Is it frightening? You know, we don't even turn it on because it's just too scary. Even when it accidentally goes off with no cops, we don't even turn it on. But in LA, they're probably like, listen, 
We've gone from the Maniscalco house to the DiCaprio house to, uh, you know, McConaughey's house. These things are firing off accidentally all day. We got to start charging. Yeah, so I, I get that. You know, like a lot of times a wind storm or whatnot setting off the alarm. So like, you know, whatever, 950 alarms should be going off at once, but maybe one yeah, of them is yeah. for real. So I get it. But Shit I just in thought, LA, I could picture them setting off the fucking, you know, making the alarms go off, you know, like well, Ooh. when the, or at least when the wind blows, I could see LA, you know, the people that, you know, the government being like, oh, we're going to clean up on. Oh, yeah. No, Alarm visits today, everybody. baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I just thought that it should be baked into the taxes where, you know, if you get a visit from a police officer and then what, you get a bill for $368 because they came to your house? Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. It's Especially like, with the money we're paying over here, you would think you, you, the, the, with the tax dollars we're paying over here, you would think there would be some type of private security offered to the residents of of, uh, of Los Angeles through the state, based on you know what the hell we're paying them. But uh, it's crazy. <laughs> so that you pay for Saturday. an ambulance too, you know, bro. Well, that's how. It, what's an ambulance cost to come to the house? I don't know. Well, you, but yeah, it ain't. you pay for the ride. Yeah, you pay for the. I think you get billed through the insurance. Uh, the ambulance. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, can we get Patrick? Can we get a Google on the price of an ambulance ride? Because based on it, you think they would be serving fucking Lionel Richie's nineteen eighty <laughs> whatever brute. I mean, uh, champagne. Seriously, man, you could sit in the back of it. They check your blood pressure. You get to the hospital. It's uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so here's another thing, though. Is that an ambulance with the fire truck? Because oh, the, the ambulance com comes with the fire truck, right? Why? Like, God forbid, if I call 911 and I go, we right. got an emergency here at the house, uh, whatever, some, someone's bleeding. They send an ambulance, but then they send a fire truck too. For what? Really? I don't know. Don't, don't you uh, uh, Google this shit? Google. I think it's a union it? thing. Fire department, the the fire unions. Um, they've got like a stranglehold on the situation, and they've forced the governments to allow them to appear every time an ambulance does, so they can be billing for that. But I'll find a proper uh, search on. Global warming, uh, emissions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> seriously, man. By the way, one perk when you pay for the ambulance is when you get there, you get to cut the line. You come in, you know, out of your freaking car, you could be sitting there for hours in the waiting room. So, there's there's a great point. Now, if you take an ambulance to the ho uh, hospital, and I took a car, but I have a guy, right, in my car that's got a bullet wound in his chest. But you arrived in an ambulance and you can't, um, you have like a, a, t a tough time breathing. Who, who, if, the, if each are equal. Yeah, right. Or if the car patient is greater of, of, of that. You create a possibility of dying. Dying? Right. Do they right, get right. ahead of you? Or do they go, nah, I got to take him. He brought an ambulance here. <laughs> <laughs> What's the. I know you're <laughs> shooting blood out of your artery there, but this guy dropped 1500 on the ambulance, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the question is, why didn't you come in an ambulance, and who's going to clean your car, guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I right, I I got to believe they go right, Patrick. They take the person dying first. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they assessed everyone yeah. uh, specifically, yeah, but, but firefighters are also EMTs. But you would think that ambulance drivers or ambulance oh. uh, workers would be as well. But yeah, firefighters are emergency medical technicians on top of their other. Oh, got you. I don't know, man. I, I got to say, though, it's, I don't know if you need, I, I, it should be a discount. 
There should be a discount. If I come in in an ambulance, if I come in in an ambulance and then you tell me, fill out this form and have a seat, <laughs> fucking have a seat, guy, for 1500 I should stay on the gurney and you roll me right in to the, to the doctor. For that kind of money, I should literally get a ride home with a hot cup of coffee after a doctor, right? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh, hey, before God. I forget, I want to give a quick thank you to the Conti family. Uh, I think they're right here in town, but they heard the cast where I got a Tim Hortons coffee and they wouldn't give it to me because I forgot my wallet. And they're like, the next few are on us. $50 gift certificate sent to me from the Contis. Thank you. Very nice I mean, of you. I mean, the, the amount of gifts you get over there is is wow. just unprecedented, bro. I mean, I've never seen anything yeah. like it. And, I, and I, you know, I forgot the name, and I know I said it once before, but this family out of Boston, they own a Dunkin' Donuts. They got me a $100 gift card with my face on it because they felt bad that you got the Lifetime Chipotle and I had nothing. And then they got me another one for Sadie. So generous. I show this Dunkin' Donuts card when I go places. I've had people pull it away and go, can I, can I show the people I work with? He's got his face on the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> gift card. Oh, it's a, it's a conversational piece. Yeah. So now oh. I'm just waiting on that thing that, you know, you. I don't want to say it out loud. I don't want to ruin it for the person that Patrick is sending me back yeah, 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 and yeah. sent to that cast listener. Yeah. Patrick, did you send it by stagecoach? <laughs> what the fuck, I? I looked at the tracking thing and it it's, it says Friday. I get it. I mean, I I get anything sent to me from L.A. It's I, I get it within like six hours. This shit is like it's it made a pit stop in Chicago uh, in Bloomfield, <laughs> Illinois, at some warehouse guy. What the fuck? So we had the party. Yeah. Then I go Sunday night to the Chargers game uh, at SoFi. Uh, we got invited. Friends of oh, ours. Oh, that was the Baker Mayfield game. Miami that that in the Chargers. Oh, Miami. Okay, no, it's not the one I'm thinking of. No, no. Uh, here's my take on football. F- football at the game. Uh-huh. We came in on the third level, and. I don't know what it is about fans and going to the event, but everybody's hammered. I mean, everybody's hammered. We, the game didn't even start yet. There's a guy just walking down, you know, jersey on, you know, the whole thing. The jersey, yeah. the hat, the whole, the whole paraphernalia, makeup. And I'm like... And it's just so many people, and I'm like, for what? You know, <laughs> like, just watch it at home. You know what I'm saying? Well, I I, just... I I prefer to watch it at home. I really do, because I like you. I want to see it. I want to see what happened. I want to know what's going on. But these people, it's funny you saying that, because last week I was watching the Bills Jets game, which I have a quick story to say about that, but. The guy on the Bills scores a touchdown to play in Buffalo, and he does the jump into the stands, and all the fans are hugging him, and he's going like this. And I, I couldn't help. I'm looking at the TV going, this is just so great, man. Everybody's got their home team. They love them. It's like, uh, I, you know, the, the drunk, I, I don't get that when they do that because, like, you paid all that money and you're missing the game. You know, I know you love the tailgate part, but I do love – have how we all have a team like i know you got chicago i know your team it's like a thing you know yeah no I, i'm not saying anything about being a fan i'm just saying like i know why that people aspect? get their well i know why people get their ass kicked at a, at a game you know you, you ever see these fights that happen in like yeah. in the stands or outside the game you yeah. know like this is why because the level of alcoholic consumption at these events is such at a, a, a at a at a uh, and, and, and and it's funny because I went to go get alcohol for Lana and I, and the guy goes, can I get an ID? I go, ID? <laughs> I'm great, bro. Like, what, what ID? <laughs> and he goes, we have to card everybody here for liability purposes. I said, well, why? I'm going to show you my ID. He goes, well, if you got a punch, if you got a DUI, they punch your license. 
And if you show me you got punch license, I can't I can't serve you because you have DUI already. Oh. And you only get two drinks per person. So if I if I got four people sitting with me, I can't go get four drinks for that. I gotta I gotta bring another person to get right. you know so that they don't like over serve you there. So I think yeah. what they're doing is getting blasted either in the parking lot or at home. Yeah. And right. then and then they come to the game shit faced. The next thing you know, they're paralyzed from the neck down because they got their ass kicked by the opposite team. You know, like <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> and what about Ooh. the other guy who's a fan of the other team and he gets so hammered, he, he misses work on Monday and then it turns out he's going to miss the work the rest of his life because he's doing <laughs> 20 years for hitting the other guy. <laughs> One punch, <laughs> the guy died. Uh, I hope you enjoyed well, the game. <laughs> that that That's another thing. The way these people are getting like knocked out and killed, you ever see these fights on like Instagram where you know there'd be like a squabble, and next thing you know, the guy nails the guy in the head, and it's not the punch; it's the guy falls, and he, <laughs> the way yeah. he falls, he bounces his head off the cement, and that's it. Brain damage, vegetable, uh. the rest of your life because you went to go root for the Forty ers over <laughs> over the Cowboys. I mean, what and, the and, fuck? And and, and 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 with that, bro, the walk away. Always blows me away when someone <laughs> knocks someone out and they walk away like just like they just going to get a cup of coffee. You don't do a turnaround. And go, oh my god, I'm in the head of that hole. You were right fucking against my mom. Shit, I punched you. We were disagreeing. They they just walk away. They're not even running. They just yeah, that that happened. I just you yeah. know knocked the guy out. <laughs> Shit. I know. There's no there's no like empathy. There's no like. You know, going down, going, guys, get an ambulance. I, I think right. I think he busted his head. It's like, it's like, and the guy falls to the floor, and then the guy's like, what bar are we going? To? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's exactly. Oh. <laughs> then he gets a tap on the shoulder from a cop three hours later, leaving the bar. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, God damn, dude. Oh God, they do oh. get nuts at those games, man. And the other thing, I have to tell you, when I when I was in college, when I played Division Three basketball, to make money, our team had a booth. Somehow we had a booth at the Buffalo Bills Stadium. It used to be called Rich Stadium, I believe. And um, so every Sunday when Bills had a home game, half the guys on the team would have to go work the bills not half of them like five guys you had to go work the concession stand and you had to do it twice a year i hated doing it i would always do it for the jet game because you could watch two quarters you had to work two quarters and then t- uh the second half what well, you didn't serve beer anymore so you were allowed to like watch from the tunnel but it was so crazy because like you said you can only buy two beers but every booth has a security guard in the booth. He's wearing a red jacket. He's not like dressed like a cop. Police and everything. And you can't serve beer after kickoff for the second half. And I've had people, I'm on, I'm serving beer and hot dogs and they're online and you can see the TV and they're lining up for the kickoff and fucking guys are online going, fucking hurry up, motherfucker! <laughs> Yelling at the guy in front, of, you know, in front of them. And then one guy, I'll never forget, my buddy, he's working right next to my buddy, and the guy goes, a uh, hot dog and two beers. And my buddy goes, I'll kick off. I can't give you the beer. And the, and the guy goes, bro, it, it just kicked off. Just give me the beer. Fuck it, just give me the beer. You got it right there. And, he, and the, he looks over, security's right there. And he goes, I can't. So he's like, all right, just give me the fucking hot dog. So he gives the guy the hot dog. He squirts mustard on it, takes it, and whips it at my friend. Just hits him with the fucking hot dog and just walks away. Like, so like it's all fault. Yeah. There's security right there, guys. You know? And then the other move they do is you're in front. Like, let's say I'm about to buy something, and I go, I'll take one pretzel. I'll get a tap. Yeah? You're not buying beer? Here, can you can you buy me two beers with yours? Because he wants to buy four. Oh, okay. and, and the person's like, I'm not I'm not comfortable. And when we see that security, he goes, no, no, no. No buying beer for the... It's like, yeah, they do is everything it, they can. Is it that? Are people that... Like, that... They get so upset when they can't get a drink, man. It's like, all right. Right. Well, maybe they should flip it, though. Maybe the NFL should go, listen, why don't we open it up and serve beer all game long and let them buy four at a time, and maybe they won't come in (laughs) (laughs) shit-faced. Right? 
<laughs> We're like, why are they coming in drunk? They're like, because you don't let us have a fucking beer once we get in here. <laughs> That's why. You know? I mean, one half of football in 30 degree weather, I'm dying. I need a cold one. You know what I'm saying? That's it, man. I mean, uh, I, and, and, and Lana and I, again, I don't know if you do this, but, you know, I mean, it was the Chargers game, and uh, I'm not a big Chargers fan nor Miami, but, you know, close game. It was like 27, I think, to 20, maybe, whatever it was, with uh, 10 minutes left. So I lean the line and I go, let's get out of here. Fourth quarter, right. 10 minutes right. left, let's get out of here. Because right. do you do you want to sit? First of all, do you want to leave with all that humanity behind right. you, in front of you? Right? Do you, right. you, you want to go down the elevator <laughs> and, go, and ask yourself, is this going to break? You know, like, I don't want to do... <laughs> And then get in the car, and you got to wait to get out of the parking lot. Uh-huh. Wrap it up, man. Right. We I got mean, out of there beautiful. It's beautiful. And you got you got two things going for you. Number one, you got a close game, so you got most people aren't going to do the sneak out. And number two, you got nothing vested. This ain't your hometown team. You're not meeting a player after the game. It's, it's a, it don't matter to me who wins. Start the car. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I mean, holy shit. Gosh. Oh, I mean, even God. if you got home, turned on your TV, and that game was now in double overtime, you'd probably be more glad that you left. Right? <laughs> now, I I don't know when last time you tried this. <clears throat> Again, these are airing out of order, but uh, last week I played Boston. Finally played the Wilbur. It was really fun, man. I had a crowd. was awesome. It was Awesome to play there. So the next day I was flying home, and I had like a 1 o'clock flight, a 1.30 flight. Bills were playing the Jets at 1. Jets got a new quarterback, Mike, Magic Mike White, baby. Magic Mike, loving this guy. Loving this guy. So we're going against the Bills. I tell Jackie, tape the game for me. I'm not going to watch it, not going to listen. I'm going to come home at 4. I'm going to pop it on. Bro, uh, my flight doesn't leave till like 2.30 is what it was. So I'm in the airport. I'm not even trying to see the TV. I'm reading. I, I don't even want to. And I know everyone's flying to Buffalo, so I don't want to hear people talking. There's one couple watching it on their computer. I'm trying to avoid that. Get on the <coughs> plane. It's jet blue. I'm like, shit, everyone's going to have it on the TV. TVs were out. They weren't working. I'm like, this is great. We land. Once we land, I'm in the car and I'm gone. Bro, plane lands. Our plane's just about to land, right? Put your headsets off, all that shit. I sit up, flight attendant comes on. Again, folks, if you want a refund for the TVs, you can go to jetblue.com and get a refund. So sorry about that. But quick update, two minutes left. Bills are up 20 to nine. Oh my God, lady, what the fuck? Now, do you ever try to watch a taped game when you already know the final score? (laughs) The whole time I'm watching the Jets going, is this the nine? Is this where we're going to get our first seven of the nine? <laughs> Fucking lady. And I know she meant well, but oh, God. It's virtually impossible in this day and age to tape a game, not find out about anything. It's it's right. it's impossible. You, you can't do yeah. it. You can't do it. I mean... I was going. I was going to try and do that with the World Cup, right? I, 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 this is. I didn't even tape it. What I did was I paused it because I had to take my kids somewhere, and then and then I came back and I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, unpause it and right. you know, not pay attention. I'm taking my kids. I <laughs> look at the phone. It's my buddy, and on, on, you know, on the phone goes, "Did you? Can you believe that goal by Messi?" Oh. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't get away uh, from it. That's a great point, too, because my buddy texted me. He was a Jet fan, and I said, don't tell me the Jet score. I got a tape. But, yeah, you can't. By the way, I need to ask you. I'm a sports fan. Can you help me? I need to understand what is what happened with this um, Ronaldo what, yeah. from Portugal, right? Yeah. Is that How do you say his name? Christian Ronaldo. One uh, of the Cristiano greatest play- Ronaldo. Yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the greatest players of all time, 
probably playing in his last World Cup, wasn't even starting, coaching him with fight. What ha- what happened? Isn't this guy? What a lousy way to go out. What what was that all about? Was he is I, he not good anymore? I don't exactly know what the relationship between him and the coach is, but they benched him for the game prior to this game, and they won like five or six to one with him on the his bench. Re- pl- his replacement got a hat trick. Yeah. So I don't know if the coach was like assessing his play going, we would be better with another player in that position. Because, I mean, he's a guy's 37 years old. It's not like he's in the so prime he's not of his as, career. He's not, yeah, he's probably okay. not as good as he once was. And maybe the chemistry of the team was much better with the other guy in than him. So the game that they just lost, they put him in at halftime. And he actually had a great opportunity to score, but he 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 didn't score. And, uh, yeah, I just think, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I think they were they were better off maybe without him. Oh, wow. That's always tough when you got this star guy and then you got to tell him, yeah, we appreciate everything you did. <laughs> uh, we were hoping... <laughs> We were hoping you'd pack your own bag, but you didn't. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I hear you, man. That's going to be a tough pill to swallow. I know. I know. Damn. It's, uh, you know, so, and then, you know, with this guy, I didn't even know he, what about Messi? How old is Messi? Messi, I think, is younger. Messi's 35. Messi's playing today at 11 o'clock. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out because uh, oh. if he wins, he goes to the cup. He goes to the World Cup, so he's got a chance of winning it, uh, which he's never done before. So, um, yeah, man, I'm into this World Cup, and I'm into, like, finally being at home and being able to relax and, and not have to worry about getting on a plane. However, I got to go uh, tomorrow. I'm going to do a corporate gig in Boca Raton. <laughs> Boca Raton. Uh, I say that would be yeah, nice. Damn. But uh, anyway, that's that's our show for today, uh, Pete and Sebastian show. We are up on Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com, five bucks a month, and you'll get uh, extra episode a month, some behind the scenes. By the way, we got to give a little bit more behind the scenes. Uh, I was looking at the page. It looks a little yeah. stale. So right. uh, if you got any uh, whatever, the, the, the well, Corielli Christmas tree, throw it up there. Give these people a little peek inside what the hell's going on. I wanted to, too. I finished my studio. I got all my black tiles up, everything. And in my gym, just got a rowing machine, which was the final touch. My gym is like if you were staying at a boutique hotel and you went down and my gym was there, you'd be like, this is just fantastic. So I, I kind of would like to share those. But... Uh, also for Patreon. Uh, by the way, bro, are we we we're not are we exchanging this year? Christmas it used to be a tradition. Just kind of went by the wayside. If we're not, we're not. I didn't get anything yet. So I uh, thought about it last week, but I haven't acted upon it. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to put a nail in the coffin on that this year, we can. I'll consider that my gift from you: a nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh, bro is God. this a metaphor for the show am i uh, are, you, are we are we gonna keep doing this i mean we used yeah, to yeah. send what? wings and stuff and we joke about it you still into it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right all right i mean guy i mean you called him your uh your, your pediatrician but he's also the other host of the other cast and he was at the eggnog party what? You live in Fredonia. What are you, are you going to buy you? Planes. All right, I'll fly. I'll fly to All hang right. out with All Lionel right. Richie and, and, do a, and do a monologue for Todd Phillips with my fucking eggnog in my hand. Bro, I can't believe, by the way, he didn't stick around for the Christmas singing because his life was about to get dark. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think Joaquin Phoenix, they go cut, and Joaquin walks over. Todd, hey, what'd you think? We get what we need right there? <laughs> like, I think he's probably that guy for three months. <laughs> yeah, that, right? yeah he's, you go to the craft services, and he's at the he's he's eating Starburst like the Joker, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. I oh, mean, my like, God. Bro, I swear to God, I, I think that. They probably have to hire a guy to follow him around to make sure he doesn't kill himself like because the character <laughs> might kill himself. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> I mean, he he probably needs a, a, a therapist after the movie's over, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's a different kind of acting. You know, they, they, they dive themselves into the role. I mean, me, me, I read the lines and go, okay, I'll play this like me. Right. You know, like, yeah. I, I ain't changing into anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no sh- Me and Jackie were watching the other day Jessica Chastain in this new movie. She plays a country singer, right? A, a show. And I, we're talking about what a great actress this woman is. And I go, Jack, if I was ever going to act with Jessica Chastain, I would meet her on set and I'd say to her, I've seen a lot of your work. It's really fantastic. You're unbelievable. And I just want you to know in this scene, I won't be doing as well as you. <laughs> okay? So as long as you go in knowing that, <laughs> I mean, you're used to acting with someone on your level, that's not going to happen right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. So, and then lastly, I want to say, if I create the game, are you guys up for you, me, Lana, Jackie doing some, yeah, some sort gonna, of? Yeah, we'll, we'll get it going. Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it I, going. That's, that's, your, that's a blow off. That's your blow off. No, no it's, not, you... it's not a blow off. We'll, we'll schedule we'll next week. She's if home, I'm, I'm home. I'm going to get some questions going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do All it. right, we got to cut. Let's plan on doing that next week. We'll get another chair next week, in here. Okay. No, no, that's going to take a while. Oh, okay. Time. Jesus I'm just saying, Christ. I, get to, yeah. <laughs> oh, so I, I commit oh, to it. I'm like, hey, 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 that's serious. Hey, it's Christmas, guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, bro. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. Take care. Later.